Hello, welcome to flipmath.com. We are the Algebros. Mr. Bean, quite confident here. This is Mr. Bruss with the googly eyes. Mr. Kelly has his face of wonderment, and I am Mr. Sullivan. I'm just terrified. All right. If this is your first time with us here at flipmath.com, we go by the Algebros. We're here to teach you some math. We hope you learn a lot. All right. Um, today, we're going to be talking about multiplying and factoring polynomials. So the first thing, maybe this is review for you. Hopefully you did this before. We're going to do this with the box method. So we're going to multiply these two things. This is a binomial times a binomial, a two-term thing with a two-term thing. So I'm going to say this is x and 6, and I'm going to make a little box here. And hopefully you've done this before. This is a very common practice now. All right, and then my x plus 3 here, and I'm just going to multiply. So I have x times x is x squared x times 6 is 6x, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 6 is 18. Now you'll notice we need to add our like terms, and like terms are always pretty much diagonal when we do this method. So I have x squared plus 9x plus 18. All right, let's try a little bit harder one. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is 2x plus y squared. That means I have 2x plus y this many times. So I'm actually multiplying 2x plus y times itself, so once, twice. All right, so let's set it up. So I have 2x and I have y, all right? If you want to put positive y, you could put a positive y there. That's no problem. And down here, I'm going to put 2x and y. Now, here's a little reminder here that says when you're multiplying the same bases, you add the exponents. So 2 times 2 is 4. x here, I have 1x and 1x, so that is an exponent of 2. 2 times 1 is 2, and I have x, y. When we have more than one variable, we like to write it in alphabetical order. It helps us find our like terms. y times 2x is 2xy. And then y times y is y squared, because I have one y and one y, that's two y's. So let's see, again, notice that our diagonals here have our like terms, so I have 4x squared plus 4xy's plus y squared. All right, common mistake alert, common mistake alert. Boop, boop, boop. When I add like terms, the term doesn't change. I have xy's, I have xy's, I'm adding, I get xy's. When I multiply things, they change. So the exponent here changed to an x squared. So the exponents only change when I am multiplying, okay? All right, let's try this one over here. This is Mr. Bean again. Now, here's the thing. If I'm going too fast for you, that's okay. The great thing about this video is you can pause it right now, look at it, rewind it, and all of that stuff, all right? So a lot of kids, they say, oh, you guys go so fast. Well, we do it because if you can keep up, that's great. If not, you can pause the video, and you should. All right, we have a binomial here times a trinomial. So I'm going to write this out. I have 3x, and I have negative y this time. All right, down my side, I have 2x squared. I have 3xy, and I have negative 2y squared. All right, let's see what we can get here with our table. All right, so 2 times 3, I multiply the coefficients, is 6. I have 2x's, and I have 1x. That's x to the third. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I have x squared, and I have 1y. 3 times 3 is 9. x times x is x squared times y. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. I have 1x, but I have 2y's. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. I have 1x and 2y's. And last but not least, negative times negative is a positive 2, and I have 3y's. So if we look here, common terms, an x and y squared. Here, x squared and a y. Remember, a common term has the same variable to the same powers. So I have 6x to the third, 9 minus 2, I have 7x squared y, negative 6 and negative 3, I have negative 9xy squared, 
and I have a positive 2y to the third. Okay, so again, this is the box method. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. You'll see in a second why we're going to do the box method. All right, so now we're going to talk about factoring, and factoring is the inverse of multiplying. All right, so we we have example number one here. Remember, we did x plus six times x plus three. We got our box, and this was our answer. So now we're going to go backwards. All right, we're going to factor it. So in the end, we're going to take this polynomial, and we're going to get our two answers of x plus six and x plus three. All right. You can see a few things here. The very first term goes in the first box. The very last term goes in the last box. The real question is, how do I get six x's and three x's here? All right, so let's take a look at one, all right? Let's do this one. So a couple of things. Very first thing is we're gonna start with our box. All right, so our box goes like this, all right? All right, so the very first thing I want you to always do, your first term goes in your first box and your last term goes in your last box. That is automatic, okay? Now the question becomes, how do I fill in these boxes? And here's how. See, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply a times c. And in this case, we multiply two times negative 21 and we get negative 42. All right, down here we have the middle term. So the middle term is b, so that is negative one. All right, so we wanna figure out how, what numbers multiply to negative 42 and also add to negative one. Sometimes it's helpful to just write out a list. Two times, or one times 42, two times 21. You can make this list right here and just keep going down, all right? And we need to remember that 42 is a negative 42, right? So sometimes we forget that. All right, so I go to 3, 3 times 14. Does 4 go into 42? No. Does 5? No. Does 6? Yes. But since this is a negative 42, I'm just going to make one side of these negative. All right, so I multiplied them. Let's see what they add up to. Negative 1 plus 42 is 41. Well, I want it to equal negative 1, so that's not it. Negative 2 and 21 add up to 19. That's not it. Negative 3 plus 14 is 11. Getting closer. Negative 6 and 7 is a positive 1. Well, I want a negative 1. That's the complete opposite answer. So I'm going to take the complete opposite signs. 6 and negative 7 equal negative 1. And that's what's going to go in our boxes. So I'm going to put a 6x here and a negative 7x here. Now, it does not matter if the 7 is here or the 6 is here. It doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to find the greatest common factor going this way and then going this way. So what is the common factor between negative 7x and negative 21? Well, there's no x in common, but I can take a 7 out. Now, the sign of this number is determined by the closest box. Since this closest box is negative, this is going to be negative 7. So now we're going this way. Between 2x squared and 6x, I can take a 2 out and an x out because 2 goes into 6 and 2, and there's 1x in both. This is a positive 2, so this will be positive. Now we're going to go up. Between 6 and 21, well, I can take a 3 out because six, 3 is a factor of 6 and 3 is a factor of 21. Now, these have different signs, but the box closest is positive, so this is positive. And 2 and 7, nothing. So between x and x, I can take an x out. So my answer would be 2x minus 7 and x plus 3. And that would be the factors, all right? Now, long and quick check. Look here, let's do it. Two times one is two x squared. Two times three is six x. Negative seven times that, negative seven x. Negative seven times three is negative 21. These add up to negative one x. Yep, that works out. That's the, the, the way to check these, all right? Let's try another one. This is Mr. Brust here, very fancy fellow. All right, so here, let's see my A times C. So when I have A here, A is four and C is negative five. So I'm gonna do four times negative five is negative 20. 
My B is 19, so that's 19. All right, so let's see. What are numbers that multiply to negative 20? So 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 does not go in, 4 times 5. And I can stop because the next number would be 5, and we already have that one. All right, but it's negative 20, so let's again make one of these negative. All right, start at the beginning. Negative 1 plus 20. Oh, yeah, negative 1 plus 20 is 19, so easy peasy. Let's draw our box. First things first. Very first box, very first term, 4b squared. Very last box, very last term, negative 5. Do not put this negative 20 in there. That's a very common mistake. All right, what goes in here? Well, one of those is negative 1b, and one of those is 20b, because we want them to add up to 19b. All right, let's go this way. We're going to take it out. What's the common factor between negative 5 and 20? Well, I can take a 5 out. This is positive because the closest box is positive. Going this way between 4 and negative 1, nothing. But I can take a B out. 4 is positive, so that's positive. Now we're going to go up. Between 4 and 20, well, I can take a 5 out and I can take a B out, right? No, that's not right. Very common mistake. Very common mistake. I divided 20 by 4 and got 5, but that's not a factor. That's not how it's factored. What is a common factor? 4 is the common factor between 4 and 20. There's a common factor of B. Down here, it looks like there's nothing in common, but there's always a 1 that I can take out. 1 is a multiple, is a factor of everything. All right, and this is negative, so that's negative. So our factors are... 4b minus 1, and b plus 5. Quick check, 4 times 1, 4b, negative 1b, negative uh, 5, 20b, and that adds up to 19. All right, very good. All right, welcome back. Let's try a couple more here. So I have k squared minus 15k equals 56. So I need two numbers that multiply to first. Now look at this. Our leading coefficient is 1. So 1 times 56 is 56. And I want them to add to our middle number, negative 15. All right. So let's see. All the numbers that multiply to 56. 1 times 56. 2 times 28. Now, here's a, here's a trick. You can do this table on your calculator. All right. But you don't need to. All right. All right, so let's take these out. That's That adds to 57, not what we want. That adds to 30, not what we want. That adds to 18, not what we want. This adds to positive 15. That's the opposite of what I want, so I have to do negative 7 and negative 8. All right, now I'm going to tell you a trick right now. I know the answer is k minus 7 and k minus 8. I'm done. I don't need to do the box on this one. And here's why, all right? Here's why I don't need to do the box on this one. Here, I've done the box. I put my first term here, k squared, my last term here. Notice that negative 7 and negative 8 are here. The reason I don't have to do the box on this one, anytime I have a leading coefficient of 1, the only factors that I can put here are 1. So I know that each of these are going to be 1 and 1. Now look over here. I had factors of 4. This could have been 4, this could have been 1, this could have been 2, this could have been 2. Lots of different choices. But when that leading coefficient is 1, there's only one choice, 1 and 1. That means I can go straight from knowing what my two factors are and putting them in my answer. And that's what we're going to do. Whenever you see a leading coefficient of 1, I'm going to go straight to that answer. Are you allowed to do the whole box? Absolutely. It's just more elegant. It's faster to go straight to the answer. All right? But if you're ever unsure, do the whole thing. No problem. All right, let's do this one here. So first times last. I need to do 3 times 20. So I need two numbers that multiply to 60 and add to 17. All right, 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15. Oh, 60 has got so many. 5 and 12. Oh, 5 and 12. 17. All right. So, first box, first square is the first term. 
last last term five g's and 12 g's because five and 12 make 17 g's all right let's go here between greatest common factor between 12 and 20 that is going to be four between 3g squared and 5g is just g and then going this way between 20 and 5 is a 5. 5 goes is a factor of both. Between 3 and 12, 3 is a factor of both, those 3G. So my answer was going to be G plus 4 and 3G plus 5. All right, you can always do a quick check. 3 times 1, 1 times 1, 5 times 1, 3 times 4, 4 times 1. Perfect. All right. At this point, it's your turn to try it all on your own. You really need to pause the video and try these on your own. It's okay to fail. It's okay to not get them right. I'm going to show you how to do them in a second, but I need you to stop the video, and I need you to really try your hardest on these without any help, okay? All right, over here, I multiplied 4x minus 3y and 2x minus 5y. I got 8x squared. I have some common terms here. I added those up, got negative 26xy, and then I got 15y squared. Remember, y and y is y squared. Remember, I do not change exponents when I'm adding. I just keep the like term xy. Factoring, first times last, 5 times 6 was 30, and I want it to add up to the middle number of 11. Now, I did not write my table. I didn't do 1 times 30, 2 times 15. As you get better at this, you should start to think, what are numbers that I know to multiply to 30? And the first two numbers that I think of are five and six. And guess what? They add to 11. And that's growing your mathematical capabilities. So you should try that. So I put first, first term in the first box, last term in the last box. Then I put my five and my six. It didn't matter which way they went. I get the same answer. Factored out here, going to the left, the only common factor was a y and a 1. Going up, I had a 5 and a 6, so it was 5y plus 6 and y plus 1. Now, I also put a box around my answers. That's just a, a pet peeve of mine. Do all this good work. Make sure we know what your answer is. All right? So go out there. Try these. I know it's hard. You're going to struggle a little bit. Keep trying. Raise your hand. Ask your teacher for help. Ask a friend for help. Ask anybody for help. Don't stop. Don't give up. Just keep doing it. You can do this. All right. Can't wait to see you guys next time.